Hello everyone, this is Abit Flashback, and today I wanted to show you a mod I just got done with, the Amiibo Nest Pie. So this is a remake of a case that was made famous by Daft Mike a couple years ago. And since then, there's been a lot of upgrades to the case and the electrical components inside, by a maker named Megabit NES. And this is powered by a Raspberry Pi 3 with functional NFC cartridges, which makes this little console one of my favorites. But I've decided to take it a step farther and make this compatible with Amiibos. Now it is possible to hack these and reprogram the NFC tech that's inside these, but it's much simpler just to add a new NFC sticker to the bottom, which is what I've done. And for each Amiibo, I programmed the NFC tag to load a game that's related but I can also just make my own Amiibo by adding an NFC sticker to whatever I choose, like this old Mario collectible, or this mini Atari 2600. I've even got a miniature Street Fighter Amiibo. So by adding NFC tags to all these collectibles, I can bring all of these to life. And if you're looking to get one of these cases, they are available on megabitnes.com, and on his website, they are called the Megabit Nest Pie Case. And on his website, there is some links to some of my videos that describe how this works and how to build it from start to finish. So if you want to check those out, you can. Now to make this compatible with Amiibos, there is a slight mod involved in the building process, but it's a super simple mod. So the case just snaps together, which is super handy so you don't have to pull a screwdriver out every time you want to take it apart. And here's a quick look at some of the electronics on the inside. And what you want to do to make this compatible with Amiibos is right here on the top part of the case, this is normally where the NFC reader would go. You would glue this right here to the bottom of the cartridge tray. But instead of doing that, what you want to do is actually glue this to the bottom of the lid located right here. And there's also a little crossbar that has to be removed in order for this NFC reader to fit in its new place. So by relocating this NFC reader to its new location, this allows it to read NFC cartridges and Amiibos. So I'll start off with loading the cartridge just to show you that it still works. We'll try Zelda. So when I push the reset button after inserting the cartridge, that's automatically gonna load that game that's programmed on the NFC cartridge, which happens to be Zelda. Now let's go ahead and try an amiibo out. This is Waligi, and this is an official amiibo, and this is gonna load a Zelda game, but not a Zelda game you're used to seeing. So this is one of my favorite Zelda games, and this is for the N64. But there is something definitely different about this game. Instead of Link, we now have Waligi. Now it's pretty much the same game. The only difference is instead of Link, it's Waligi. Next up is an official Duck Hunt Amiibo, and it's gonna be pretty easy to guess what's gonna pop up here. That's right, Duck Hunt. And you are able to actually play this game using a Wii Remote. Next up is one of my favorite Amiibos, Rob the Robot. And if you don't get this guy to make him functional, you should just get him for a collection piece because he looks awesome next to a miniature Nintendo. And here's a Yoshi Mario Kart figure, and this is actually just a McDonald's toy with an NFC sticker on the bottom. So with each of these Amiibos, when I place them on the top of the console and push the reset button, it automatically loads whatever games programmed on the NFC tag. Here's a Bowser figure. Let's go ahead and load this and see what we get. And this is actually a Super Mario World remake called Bowser's Revenge. And it's a pretty decent game. Here is another McDonald's toy. This is a Luigi figure. So I'll go ahead and push the reset button. And this is going to load another Super Mario World remake called Luigi's Adventure. Here's an old Super Mario Bros. 3 figure from 1989. And it's got some age to it, but I think this thing is really neat. He even still functions. If you press it all the way down, he actually pops up and springs up. Let me get a better spring here. There we go. So, any guesses on what game this is gonna load? Well, only one game makes sense. Super Mario Brothers 3. Here's a Transformers logo with some built-in sound effects. Man, that guy has a really cool voice. Imagine if I could narrate all my videos with his voice. That would sound really cool. 
And this is a Transformers game for the Famicom, and this came out in 1986. Well, that was really quick. I'm already dead. Here's a Star Wars figure that has some built-in sound effects. Let's see what this loads. And I believe this is the first Star Wars that came out on the Super Nintendo called Super Star Wars. And here is an official Street Fighter Amiibo. And it should be pretty obvious what game's gonna load here. Street Fighter II Championship Edition for the PC Engine. And this is my miniature Street Fighter Amiibo to match my official Street Fighter Amiibo. So it's actually the same figure, same stance, same everything, just miniature. And these are really easy to program with the NFC tags. All you gotta do is set them on top of the console, then hold that reset button for about three seconds. Then the light's gonna start blinking, indicating that it's writing to the NFC tag. And whatever game that you have loaded or playing at that moment is what's gonna be written to the NFC tag. And here's another miniature amiibo. This is Gizmo Duck. And there's only one appropriate game for this. DuckTales. Well, that's great. Now this song is gonna be stuck in my head for the rest of the day. Here's a very cool official amiibo. This is the Mario 30th anniversary. I really like how he's all pixelated looking with an 8-bit effect, but he's still a 3D figure. And I had to go with Super Mario Bros. 1 because that's what the figure represents. And for my last amiibo, this is a homemade one using a miniature Atari 2600. And this has some amazing detail on it. It's really cool just for a collection piece. The detail on this thing is so good, it actually looks like it functions. And now it actually does function. Well, kind of. This is a remake of Super Mario Bros. 1 for the Atari 2600. Now this is definitely not identical in any way to the original Super Mario Bros. 1, but it's definitely cool to see this running on the Atari 2600. Well, at least an Atari 2600 emulator. And the gameplay is actually pretty good. Well, at least it's a lot better than most of the Atari 2600 games. Okay, it's time for me to go. Thanks for watching. If you like that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.